because of its zebra striped legs, but is actually a relative of the giraffe because of its prehensile tongue and the shape of its skull. Speaking of its skull shape, we know that the males have ossicones, the females do not. Ossicones are horn-like structures. They lie underneath the skin. Then all giraffes have them. So once we see, once we see the giraffes, I'll be sure to point out their ossicones. At the moment, we're seeing a female low copy, by the way. You may see a male at Gorilla Falls. It should be the second animal on the trail. We're seeing greater kudus coming up on the right. The greater kudus are one of the tallest antelopes in the world. They can grow up to be 55 inches just at the shoulder. We know that they're females, so they don't have any horns. The males have spiraled horns, and there's a picture above our heads and a spotting guy. Oh, to the left, right, black rhino. The black rhino has a pointed mouth with a prehensile muscle on his upper left to allow it to grab its food. It only weighs about only because when you see the white rounds later on, they weigh a lot more. Rhinos can run up to about 35 miles per hour, which is much faster than a truck. Continue to the right. Bongos. The bongos are known as the ghosts of the forest, as they are almost rarely seen and love to hide within the dense vegetation. They have horns that point towards the back of their heads to allow them to easily and quickly travel the forest without the horse getting caught. To the left, there's a saddle stork. It's the black and white bird. This saddle stork is a snake from the yellow marquee on its bill. It's shaped like a saddle. It can grow up to be five feet tall, but the wings can up to nine feet wide. And it will communicate by simply rattling its bill simply because it doesn't have any info before. The friends on the right, you may see some hippos in the water. Friends on the left, if you can't see those hippos on the right, there'll be more water further up on the left to spot some hippos. And there's some pink back pelicans further up. Looks like they're just enjoying some lettuce. The hippos are enjoying the lettuce. The pelicans, uh, looks like they're just hanging out. The pink back pelicans get their names when their skin turns pink during mating season. Mating season for them is year round, so they'll just pick and choose when they would like to mate and their skin will turn pink. Hippos on the left, by the way, for my friends on the left. Let's try best to make seated. Even the little ones must be seated. There they are. You can see the baby hippo resting on mom's neck. That baby hippo weighs about 1,000 pounds, 800 to 1,000 pounds. She just turned one two months ago. The friends hippos will spend most of their time submerged under water in the deep over the tank. The water helps to regulate their body temperature. Down, they'll be eaten in nearby vegetation or just leave them resting. Hippos 
hold their breath for eight minutes. They will swim, but usually they just walk their right hand on the bottom. They have left toes to aid them in swimming. Let's see if they have a territorial. They have long 18 inch incisors, so it's enough for themselves to get their feet, but the paws are short to lift because they don't eat plants. And so it doesn't eat plants. They're crawling down. unique and unlike any other tree you've ever seen before? Well friends, it's a beetle bob tree. The beetle bob tree can go only for nine months out of the year during droughts. It can also hold thousands of gallons of water in its trunk. Here on the savannah, we hope to see some of Africa's most famous animals, such as elephants, lions, zebras, and giraffes. And you may see some giraffes from here. They're the tallest animals in the world. <laughs> six feet across. They may appear to be heavy, but they're actually really light since they have a honeycomb structure on the inside of them. It allows the blood to flow to those horns and ecstasy to be released, therefore cooling the end cold the cattle off. You can see at least one giraffe they're on the side and off of their regular patterns. You may notice the oscillons to the top of their heads. We're going to see giraffes. We're going to see giraffes much closer, further up. And there's plenty of wildebeest. So friends, there's about 1 to 1.5 million wildebeest remaining in the world. They like to travel large her in large herds, so migrate between 500 to about 1,000 miles per year. If you look into the left, look behind the cave, you'll see the painted dogs, the wild dogs. They are extremely successful at hunting, even more successful than any of the big cats. They have between an 80 to 90 percent success rate because they like to exhaust their prey. To the left, we're going to see the sable ants all the way in the back. The giraffes notice their acetones. There's wildebeest on both sides. And here's someone saying zebra. Looking for the zebra. Someone said zebra. We're seeing wildebeest, I know people like some they will sometimes confuse wildebeest for zebras. But yeah, let's see. the wildebeest will sleep in um, rows with just no space in between them. So when alarm they can really stand up and run. One of their main modes of defense is to stampede, but I'm sure they have very strong and powerful kicks. Looks like we're gonna see a few more giraffes. Check out his ossicones. Remember ossicones are horn-like structures. They lay underneath the skin. They use a sparring and establishing dominance within the tower. At least one way that they establish dominance. And I said that they're horn-like structures simply because they're made of bone. Usually horns are made of keratin. Looks like baby giraffes coming up on the right. But we did see the same way Ansel's friends, and they may have looked familiar to you since they are the symbol for the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. They should be in pride while using those long back horns so if I don't predators and we want to pounce into their backs. And we're seeing some giraffes. Look at the baby giraffe, he's the last one. Baby giraffe just turned one a few months ago. Giraffes are still considered babies up until two. Between two and five, they're teenagers, and after five, they're considered adults. Check out their round bellies. They're part of a group of animals called ruminants, meaning that they have compartment stomachs. So pretty much, whether they ate something two minutes ago or even two hours ago, they're going to continue to chew all the day long. It's kind of like having unlimited leftovers. Oh look, there's the zebras. And then there's all the and giraffes taking out with them. Now 
because obviously that giraffes have long necks, but did you know that they have the same number of vertebrae in their necks as we do? Which is seven. Here's just large, they also have large hearts. Imagine hearts have a pump about 20 feet in the air. And there's the zebras, we have a mini dazzle here. And they have the Hartman's Mountain Zebras. They're known for their just skin food underneath their necks. It aids them in hydration. And it's called a dewlap. They're the only species of zebra to have it. The dewlap is more common in various antelopes and cattle. But for the Hartman's Mountain Zebras, it comes in handy since they like to spend their time in the mountains. More wilderness. The Hartman's Mountain Zebras have large hearts. And it's to be able to maintain or stabilize their blood oxygen levels when at high altitudes. Zebra has its own unique pattern, just like we have our own unique fingerprints. But I think it's really cool that babies who go swim around their mother's pattern. So that they'll only see the nurse from their mother, so their mother's only. in the world. They can weigh up to about 100 pounds. Males are larger than the females. They can be up to about four times the size of the females. You can still see the male within the bushes. You can see about the size of a child. The males have really rainbow markings in their faces. It becomes bright when excited. Unlike other monkeys, the man is supposed to most of the time on the ground. Go back to the elephant friends. You can observe them. You'll notice the female prefer to hang out by themselves. Simply because of your tutorial, sometimes they'll hang out with their stomachs and after their parents. Females like to hang out together along with their babies and young. They're much larger groups because of that. They'll be able to the females to be more so than the males. As far as the animals, they don't have very good things when they need to teach about six years old. Yes, we do. Including gathering your food out of the natural sunscreen. 
They have very sensitive skin. They'll throw mud into their backs, bellies, and sides. As far as them gathering their food, they eat about 300 pounds of food per day. This match has been yeah. pound salads as they all eat plants. I know. We're passing by the great flamingos. Notice the young flamingos. They're not entirely pink. The beautiful flamingos are known for their lighter pink colors. It comes from the shrimp that they eat. The shrimp contains beta carotene, which obviously gives them that pink color. But that means they're born. They're not actually pink. They are really the gray. Now, I think it's cool that you can determine which are more mature than others by simply looking at the shape of pink. But some of them still have gray feathers, gray legs, and makes a combination of gray and pink on them. But a fully grown flamingo can weigh up to about 9 pounds and be height of around 4 feet. And those are females on the left. Oh, look at the little female. Jurassic. So, we're passing by some horns and tusks on a platform. That means the meat is poached in the area. So, for instance, keep eyes open and stay alert so we can protect the animals the best that we can. Poachers will poach elephants for their tusks because they're made of ivory. Because they contain keratin. Oh, there's an oxygen, right? You may see the ostriches later on. There's one. Oh, there's more. The friends, we can simply help the bridles and the elephants out by just continuing the use of iron and keratin or by finding more of the same source of iron and keratin. We also need to help the hippos out because they're walking inside for native iron and they're much for them. There's a cheat on the left. Oh, there's two At least you can see it. Sometimes they can't be hard to spot out because their patterns will allow for them to easily blend in with the surroundings, making it harder for prey to see when they're coming. There's a rhino on the right, by the way. It's a white rhino. It's just resting. The cheetahs can run up to about 60 miles per hour, but only for a few hundred yards. After easily being exhausted or overheated, they'll have to be charged for about 30 minutes before being able to run up to their max speed. They do have semi-retractable claws to grab onto the ground when riding, as well as a flat tail for steering. If the cheetah does not catch its prey within the first few seconds of running, its prey will be long gone. And the cheetah will try to get it about 30 minutes. But it only takes the cheetah roughly three strides to be 60 miles per hour. Each stride is about 20 feet. Hopefully, we are out for nation. Oh, oh, yeah. Sleeping. Lazy. They will you use sleep. the rocks as an outlook for prey. And they will sleep between 16 and 20 hours out of the day. When they're by the rocks, they tend to camouflage with them. Isn't the lions and hunting? Their prey will be put through one of the rocks and their prey should have really bad eyesight. Probably spot out the male. Usually the male's easiest to spot out to compare to the females because of its name. But just notice how the mane of the lion is getting darker. That's becoming the true alpha of the body. Its mane will eventually be entirely black. Oh my god, can't see it. It's not even from behind. It's a monster box. It's actually one of the oldest monster boxes in America. I'll show you the monster box. The lion's on the left. There's a lion nest. There's another lion nest. Oh, they hide the rock higher than the mill in the distance. You can kind of see her up there. There she is. She's watching something. Lions take the hands together and watch family groups called prides. Where there's plenty of females, and your males, the males are darker than of course the alpha, but the females are most of the hunting while the males stay back. The captain of the pride and protect the territory. Pumba, right? There's some warthogs on the left. Where's Pumba? Warthogs are growing animals. Pumba? They'll use their snouts. I think it's that a bee. No, they'll use their snouts and tusks to burrow into the ground. They have a total of four tusks, two for burrowing, and another two for defending Pumba, themselves. Pumba, the warthog. Speaking of them defending themselves, they will hide inside of the burrows away from predators, but also from the sun to the eyes. Look at their skin. There's an ostrich over here. all over the place. Wrong time of the year for the eggs. Yeah, there's some eggs on the right. Mm -hmm. They're coming up. Oh, there's a warthog much closer to you. But those are ostrich eggs on the right. We didn't see the ostrich. It weighs three, well, it weighs about 320 pounds max. And it can be about seven feet tall. The ostrich is the largest size of the bird. 